The tip of the sword was like a flash of lightning. A spearhead thrust to skewer the heart. Even attempting to evade it was pointless. It was but a flash, too swift for the human eye to follow. And yet, moonlight swept in to save me. From the strike that threatened to end me. The sound was beautiful, like the tolling of a bell. No, truth be told, the sound hung over me, heavier than an iron weight. This beauty had little to do with aesthetics. The stark armor wrapped around her was like the frozen night itself. The ringing was not in itself pleasant. It was a sound of steel, but the night herself was beautiful enough to make it into, a ch into the ch chiming of a bell. I ask of you, Hold on, voice acting. Hold on, we getting bougie. I ask of you, are you my master? Her voice resonated in the darkness. I have come in response to your summons. Henceforth, my blade is with you and your fate with me. Our pact is now sealed. Indeed, the pact was sealed. Just as she chose to serve me, I'm sure in that moment that I swore to save her. The moonlight cut through the darkness. As if an imitation of the night, the storehouse regained its former calm. Time had stopped. The vision before me had lasted less than a second. Be that as it may, I will always remember the sight of her as clearly as if it were still happening now, even if I fall into the depths of hell. The faint, the faint slant of her profile, her serene, divinely green eyes. For a moment, time stopped, and her silhouette, draped in blue, swayed in the wind. I was struck by the pale blue glow. Her hair, as fine as golden thread, was bathed in moonlight. Hold on. This happened 10 years ago. I see someone who takes me back. He's tall with chiseled features. I've never known him to crack a joke. He ruffles my hair affectionately. No, that's not what this is. It's more like he's grasping my head and working it like a stubborn jar lid. Maybe he doesn't know how to control his strength. That's only to be expected. It's the first time he's ever done something like this. It's time for me to leave. You know what to do next. I answered yes in a somber voice. He nodded once, withdrew his hand, and stood up. That's all. Had I known this would be the last time we would ever see each other, I would have done my best to make him laugh with the perfect joke. I've been practicing punchlines in private in hopes of finally seeing a smile crack on that stony face. If I have one regret, it's that I never got to tell him any of my jokes. Oh shit, we're a little girl. My fault. <laughs> we're a little girl. Hold on. <laughs> get to the associate get the association in your debt before you become an adult. Any decisions after that I leave to you. I'm sure you'll manage on your own. So he said, but I bet he was worried about me. He told me about our family's heirloom jewels, the gems passed down to us from our grandmaster, and how to manage the underground workshop. It was a rapid fire course of subjects he never taught me before. Even as a child, I realized that he would probably never come home again. There was a war, not a war between countries, but between people. But in this war, there were only seven combatants. It might not have seemed fitting to call it a war, but having mages involved changes things. Seven mages from different factions competed, but I wasn't sure why. They killed each other using methods I didn't really understand. One of them was the man in front of me. It meant that he would kill and eventually be killed. I'm sure he felt the ticking of his life's clock even more keenly than I did. Grin. Before long, the Holy Grail will appear. It is the duty of the Totakas to obtain it.
but above all, it is a path we are destined to walk as mages. And with that, he ruffled my hair one last time and left. I never saw him again. My father slash teacher was one of the masters who participated in the Holy Grail War. He never came home. The fuck? Oh shit. Safe travels, father. I bid him farewell as a well-behaved daughter should. I knew I was on the verge of tears, but I didn't let them show. I loved him. He was a great father and an even greater mage. Mages are stubborn people. As far as I knew, there weren't, there wasn't a more upstanding man in the whole world. As my instructor, he trained me. As my father, he loved me. So I decided I'd accept the things he left for me and choose my own path. Rin, before long, the Holy Grail will appear. It is the duty of the Tosakas to obtain it. But above all, it is a path we are destined to walk as mages. In the end, his final words to me were given as a mage, not a father. That's the moment I made up my mind. Alright, I guess I'd better do everything I can to become a worthy mage. It's only natural for an apprentice to live- Fucking hell. It's only natural for an apprentice to live up to her master's hopes. That's how I, Rento Saka, grew up after experiencing life's twists and turns. It's been 10 years since my father went off to war. I wouldn't say I've been looking forward to this day, but I am a bit on edge. That goes without saying, after all. The moment which was burned into my memory 10 years ago will soon be upon me again. Damn, that, 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 that holy grail war shit, right? July 30, fucking hell, January. I'm sorry, I'm just damn stupid sometimes. I didn't even do my intro. Well, I'm not about to do it now. That shit's gonna piss me off. Hold on. Mmm. I hear something. Ring, ring. Shut up. Stop. The noise doesn't stop. It's such an infernal racket. Almost as if it's here to avenge my father. What now? I was up late. Just a little longer. I wish it just let me sleep a bit more. In fact, it should. I stayed up in the early hours deciphering my father's will and I used a hell of a lot of magical energy to do it. I'm totally exhausted, body and mind. Good grief, cut me some slack, would ya? Ring, 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 ring. The alarm clock, fuck, quack, quack, nigga, quack, cock? The alarm clock is deaf to my complaints. What kind of machine makes a noise that seems like its sole purpose is to remind you that you're late? An alarm clock, dumbass. Late. I can't be late. True, but there's a time and place for everything. No matter how much of an overachiever I am, I should try to make it to school on time, at least for today. If only slightly. Alright, I set my alarm 30 minutes early. Which means I should still be able to sleep another 30. Uh, doesn't that sound off? 30 minutes early. Appear at the alarm clock through sleep heavy eyelids. The hands point towards 7 o'clock on the dot. I usually get up at 6.30, which means I've completely used up my safety margin. You said it 30 minutes late, nigga! Speaking of which, why is my brain so slow in the morning? Huh. I glare at the alarm clock for several seconds. I shut off the alarm clock and climb sluggishly out of bed. Damn. 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 Yeah, nigga playing fate. Said we playing fate. Gang got hand tied, so I'm gonna masturbate. Said I'm gonna masturbate. Why the fuck DJ Academics be on Chatterbait? That shit weird. That shit strange. Niggas like me. We not fake, but I pull up with the gang, and you know it's getting eight. Cause we go win the Waffle House, little nigga. And you know, over there, we gotta pull the trigger. Niggas be wildin', young niggas shootin'. Niggas like me, I get my girl, that's my booin'. 
We be chillin' and we be riding. Finna pull up to fucking five guys in. But she ain't fucking five guys. We just eating burgers with the fries. Niggas like me, we be riding. I'm gonna pull up with my guys in. We gon' get shit done. Make this money and get those fun, bitch. Hold on! Hold on, that was smooth. That was smooth as fuck. With that being said, what up, gang? This Ken Zerk, Ken Zilligan, Zika Milligan, the Villa Villa Trilligan, and we are on Fate Stay Night. Look, I'm a little pissed off. I'm gonna be real. Because I wanted to upload, I wanted to start this game after I after I finish up, after I beat um Danganronpa V3, right? But to, last night, I'm just looking on Steam and I see Fate Stay Night Remaster coming out tomorrow. I'm like, well, fuck, now I, now I have to, now I gotta play it now, damn, right? But I am playing Tsukihime as well. I really don't know how I feel playing Tsukihime and Fate at the same time, but, you know, that's just how shit turned out. Anybody that's new to the channel, I'm getting onto these visual novels. I've been playing Persona, Danganronpa, RPG horror games, but I'm getting into visual novels. I've already started Umineko, Phoenix Wright, and I've got Tsukihime coming, and y'all y'all watching this shit right now. But, you know, don't expect me to be like Manly Badass here. I fucking love that guy, by the way. You don't expect me to be like him. This ain't gonna be no the morning chill bites at me as I cross the hallway and into the parlor. And it's like, no, like, you know, it's just like that. Nah, I'm goofy as fuck. I'm gonna be in here saying dumb shit. I'm gonna be in here cussing. I'm gonna be subjective. I'm gonna be saying gay shit. I'm gonna be saying freaky shit. We, 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 we strange on this channel. But, <clears throat> the morning, fuck. And I'm illiterate as hell, so like, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little on the illiterate side. The morning chill bites at me as I cross the hallway and into the parlor. This is the final 7 a.m. in January. Winters in Fuyuki are relatively warm, but the mornings here are as, co as cold as anywhere. Even at home, my breath mists white. It's that much colder without anyone else living here. Oh shit, my fault. I'm gonna start this whole shit over. But I need to tell y'all, I watched Fate Zero years ago. I don't really remember it that well, but I watched it years ago. And that's what got me into Fate in the first place. But I, I think it was like the tone, like the shift in tone and how different and goofy it was compared to Fate Zero. It just kind of turned me off from it a bit. So I just, so once I started playing like, you know, these type of games, I decided like, all right, I'm not gonna watch it. I'm gonna just find a time and I'm gonna play Fate, stay night on my channel, and then that's gonna be how I experience it. And after that, maybe I'll watch the anime. I've heard it got some fire fights. But let's start over, hold on. The morning chill bites at me as I cross the hall and get into the parlor. This is the final 7 a.m. in January. Winters in Fuyuki are relatively warm, but the mornings here are cold as anywhere. Even at home, my breath mists white. It's that much colder without anyone else living here. Heater, heater! I turn on the heater and go wash up. Single living is so inconvenient at times like these. If there was someone else here to wake, wake up before me, then the parlor would already be heated. Oh, my throat is killing me. I'm not good with reading. I wash my face at the sink. I run a brush through my long hair and get dressed. A chilly morning in the fridge and bathroom. The only thing to be said the only thing to be said for it is that the cold water mercilessly beats the sleepiness from me. Type shit. With the final tug on the ribbon of my collar, I finish getting dressed. All that's left is to have breakfast and go to school. The clock reached just past seven, so my morning rush feels a bit anticlimactic. Oh, I don't even need to run then. Of course, I never do something such as, as uncouth as sprinting to school. The Tosaka family motto dictates that we conduct ourselves with confidence and elegance at all times. My ancestors must have been some high and mighty aristocrats if that's what we've taught through the generations. The anacrostic mansion I live in is proof, of the, uh, proof enough of that. Plus, the Tosakas are a line of spell weavers who practice what is known as magecraft. Just call it witchcraft, nigga. You making shit complicated. We're not just any old fam we're not just an old family. 
We have an admirably storied history. Don't throw a fucking Kamehameha at me. Not that it's anything to brag about. In fact, I literally can't talk about it. The truth is, <laughs> I'm a mage. Who could I even brag about that to? As the name suggests, magecraft is what most normal people would see as magic. It sounds like some supernatural woo woo. If you think, if you, if you, fuck. If you'd like, fuck, fuck. If you'd like to, fuck. It sounds like some supernatural woo woo. And if you'd like to think of it as just wiggling your fingers and saying, abracadabra, that's fine too. Just think of it, just think of us as people who chant weird words and make equally weird stuff happen. That said, we don't fly around on broomsticks. We don't shoot stars out of wands either. We we can do that, but there's no point, so we don't. We're pretty much heretics who lurk in the shadows of society. We're not allowed to draw attention to ourselves, and anyone who has the time for that kind of thing would rather spend it on their research. Ordinary humans might call us magicians, but that would be wrong. In fact, there are only five magicians in the whole world. Magi Magicians are what we call people who can do something no one else can. They can accomplish feats beyond the means of modern science and perform genuine miracles. Similarly, magic is the label for us we use for mystics, magical mysteries that can't be realized with any amount of time or skill. While magecraft, though it looks mysterious, is something anyone can do with enough time and resources. I'm a mage, and the kind of mystics I use are merely magecraft, not true magic. Confusing, I know, but that's how it works. Not that confusing, I, I understand, I understand. Also, modern civilization doesn't accept the existence of mages. We believe in, manipulate, and study things that can't be measured, which puts us at odds with modern society. Above all, there's no point in any of what we do. You'd be so much happier just going to school going to a normal school and becoming a normal adult than you would studying magecraft. Human technology has accomplished great things. For the last few centuries, magecraft has been playing catch up with the progress of civilization. Damn, so y'all like, y'all inferior to air conditioning and microwaves and shit? Lock in. Nothing is impossible for humanity anymore. Miracles that could only be realized with magecraft in the distant past have been reduced to common tools and appliances. Even so, magecraft does have its benefits. This is there are some things only science can accomplish. There remains heights only mystics can reach. If science is racing into the future, then mages are racing into the past. I think the Tosaka Grand Master said that. Whether you're heading into the past or future, your destination is the same. Zero, or something like that. We can shelve the difficult topics for now. Philosophy is for the old niggas. What what the fuck is that? Body slash revenge. What is that? What does that mean? I finish my breakfast and pick up my bag. Alright, oh, gotta bring my pendant. I'm reluctant to take something so valuable to school, but it'll be a waste to leave it behind. I mean, this thing's a hundred years old. It's by far the most powerful jewel we have. I'm finna steal that shit. Don't bring that shit around me. That damn elixir. My fault. That looked like the... The damn jewel from JoJo's part two. The, 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 the was it a bloodstone? No, that's not what it was called. That's not what it was called, was it? Damn. I already freestyled once. Don't do it again. These don't make their ears bleed twice, little nigger. One could even say it's on an entirely different level. I obtained the gem after decoding my father's will last night. It's imbued with ten years worth of my own magical energy. I've been told that the Tosaka family has heirloom jewels passed down since the olden days. This one might be one of them. Tosaka made to specialize at the conversion and flow of power. We channel our magical energy into precious gems whenever we have a spare moment. Simply put, I'm the gun and the gems are in the- FUCK! Tosaka Mage is specialized at the conversion and flow of power. We channel our magical energy into precious gems whenever we have a spare moment. Simply put, I'm the gun and the jewels are bullets. The other main thing I've inherited from my father is the magic crest engraved into my left arm. 
A magic craft, a magic, a magic crest is proof that I'm the heir to our lineage. It's all like the techniques of the Tosaka condensed into a tattoo. Can't let my guard down, even if it hasn't started yet. For now, I stole my pendant, my father's keepsake in a pocket. It's my trump card. Nothing I can't do with the power stored in there. It's half past seven. Nigga, just say 7.30. I better leave soon if I don't want to be late to school. After school, what does that mean? Stop doing that! Hold on, let's see if I can say this. Hold on. I got this, I got this. Schliebung. Is it... <sighs> I feel like this is German. I know a lot of old animes and shit. They really love the, like, the German language for some reason. It sounds cool as hell. I don't blame them. German is a like, cool ass language. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna assume this is German. Schliebung verfaden dre. Hell yeah, I got that shit. I weave energy into a brief foreign phrase. As a mage, I can't neglect the security of my home base. That still applies even if I've never had so much as a single burglar. Bur 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 burglar? I know that word. Bur fuck! Stop cussing, Zeke. That's not cool. That still applies even if I've never had as so much as a single burglar. Burglar? Burglar? Am I saying? Bur burglar. Bur burglar. It just doesn't sound right. Burglar, lost child, or strayed cat wandering into my home. Actually, I don't think the neighbors have ever even come to come over to say hello. They don't fuck with you. And that's fine with me. But why don't I ever get any stray cats around here? I look up at the mansion that's been my home for over a decade. Fuyuki is a strange city. One side of the intersection dividing the residential areas is filled with old samurai estates. While the side I'm on has an abundance of mansions built in European style. Apparently, a whole bunch of foreign families immigrated here long ago. But I've never seen a single foreigner around. There's, ouch. There's even a cemetery for foreigners in Shinto, the new part of the city, across the river. But it was built for the generation that immigrated here. Maybe Japan just didn't suit them. I make a mental note to ask the priest about it next time I visit the church. He's nothing if not full of boring trivia for sure. Can I get a drink? Stop doing that. Oh, hell no, that's creepy. Some shit about to happen. We about to walk into some strange shit. I missed, damn it. I hope I close that bottle all the way. Oh? Something feels off as soon as I step outside. That's weird. It's quieter than I thought. There's no trace of the typical morning bustle. At 7.30 in the morning, there would normally be students and workers on their daily commute. I, I guess it's just one of those days. Maybe everyone slept in. <sighs> it's unusually cold today, so everyone must be snuggled up in bed. Nah, bro. See, now you saying that you're going to walk out and get your fucking brains blown out. Still, though, even if that were true, it's strange that there isn't a single student on the street. At this time of day, you'd expect to at least see a school uniform or two. Yet from where I'm standing at the school gate, it looks like morning club activities are just starting up. Which can only mean... What the fuck is that fit? Oh, Pillberry, Pill, Pillberry Doughboy ass. What the fuck? I mean, look, I ain't gonna shit talk. It ain't like it's trash. It ain't a trash fit. But like, damn, that's it's goofy as hell. Oh, Tosaka, you're awfully earlier today. Yeah, I knew it. With a light sigh, I turned to face a student who called out to me. Morning, sure it's cold today. The girl who addresses me so casually is Aiko Mitsuzuri. She's my classmate in 2A and she has quite a history. Morning, Mitsuzuri. And sorry for the weird question, but do you know what time it is? Huh? It's not even 7 yet. You still asleep or something? Who is this? 
Oh, hold on. What, who the fuck is this? Where did he come from? She waves her hand in front of my face as if to ask if anybody's home. Aiko is one of my few friends. She knows I'm not a morning person. She's probably figured out by now that I'm not completely with it. The clocks at home are an hour ahead. All of them, apparently. I thought it was just my alarm clock, but the grandfather clock was off too. What's going on here? Father must have set the clocks to go haywire once I took the pendant out of the underground cellar. Wait! Wait! Hold on, is that the person that was inside the uniform? Wait, what's going on? I'm so lost right now. Because they sound the same, but he don't have titties no more. Dosaka, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. Are you on your way to pra morning practice, Mitsuri? Mitsuzuri? No, so that is Mitsuzuri. Why the- what the fuck? What? Am I tripping? Am I tripping? Or like... Is this a glitch? Am I bugging right now? Or, or or is this something that's gonna be explained later on? What the fuck? Yeah, there's a lot of troublemakers in the Kudo Club. We're down one of our best shooters. We need to put on a good show if we're gonna attract first years in April. I see. Sounds rough? Way to show you care. Oh, wanna come see? I'm sure the boys would love to know you're watching. Now they're back to- Huh? The Kudo Club, huh? I'm acquainted with three of its members. One is Ayako, the girl I'm talking to now. I barely ever, I barely ever speak to the other two. And those latter two, there's one I actually can't explain away as simply an acquaintance. I became friends with Ayako, the club captain, because I've been watching the club from afar. Uh, as long as I'm just watching, I'll come. It's not like I have anything else to do this early in the morning. Nice, so let's get going. What the hell? So they're making it look like they're the same person. One of our club, one of our, fuck. One of our school's trademarks is as well equipped archery range. The chair from the school board, the chair from the, the chair of the school board has a passion for Kudo, traditional Japanese archery. So they built a magnificent range on campus. It's kind of a waste for a high school club, to be honest. Come on, let's go. There's still some time before practice starts, so I'll let you get some tea. I'll get you some, I'll get you some tea. Aiko tugs on my arm, looking somewhat pleased. She does not look pleased. If I'm being honest, her brusque way of speaking is a bad habit. What the fuck was that? There's no one else at the range. Well, how the fuck would you know that? You're not at the damn range, are you? I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm so fucking confused. <laughs> As Aiko said, there's no one else at the range. We sip Japanese tea that's so hot it numbs my tongue. As we prepare ahead for today's classes. The hot drink is delicious in the quiet, wintry archery range. Because... <laughs> Because we're definitely in the archery range. Look at this, guys. Y'all see the archery range? Look at that, guys. We're in the archery range right now. This is definitely a fucking archery range. Okay, I'll get right down to it. What's up with you today, Tosaka? Did you finally reel in someone good? And she uses the occasion to ask me something completely ridiculous. She's got to be absolutely stupid. You're just getting straight to it today, huh? Should I take that tone to mean you beat me to the punch? No comment. If you're not showing your cards, then neither am I. So, how about it? If you being so tired as anything to go by, I bet I'm right on the mark. No comment either. But I guess even if I tried to hide it, you see right through me. Sadly, not yet. What about you? Can you really afford to take your time on the romantic front? You're not wrong. Things aren't looking too good. Sure, I could grab someone just for appearances, but quality matters, you know? I shouldn't compromise with my futures on the line. 
Uh-huh. Are you that worried you'll make the wrong choice and lose to me? Obviously. The important thing here is that you lose to me. What I actually gained in the process is secondary, really. She chuckles confidently. We're two peas in a pod. Yeah, I told you when we met that this would be what it's like between us. She did, didn't she? Kill or be killed. I'm sure that's how it'll be between the two of us. I was genuinely surprised to have someone say that right off the bat. I'm predicting it. She's going to be in the Holy Grail War. We're going to have to fucking murder her. W. Translation. Our friendship won't bloom unless we're constantly... Blued? Our friendship won't bloom unless we're constantly trading blows. It's what Ayako was getting at. I agree with her. In the two years since then, I still haven't figured out whether she's my friend or my nemesis. She's a friend of me. How, how did we get on this again? What? You started it, Tosaka? You complained that you'd never have a boyfriend, so we decided to make it a contest to see who catches one first, remember? Alright, that was the deal. We said whoever loses has to do whatever the winner says for a day, right? Y'all playing the long game. For a, for, for a challenge that only lasts a day? Y'all playing the long game? You better follow my orders for a week. You know, like, you know how much effort this takes? Yeah, I don't think even kids make deals like this anymore. But we're both sore losers. No matter what happens, the loser has to honor the deal. Gotta say, I'm looking forward to winning. You ain't gonna win. I'm the one playing. Shut up! Shut up! I'm the one playing as Tosaka. So we 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 pulling all the bitches. You ain't winning, Jack. Diddly squat. You you gonna have better luck at a Diddy party than you gonna have luck. You, you gonna have better luck finding girls at the Diddy party than you gonna have getting a girl before me or getting a man before me. Yeah, yeah. Aiko snickers in the light. My goodness. Aiko Mitsuzuri, Mitsuzuri, to put it mildly, a handful. I'll admit, I'm looking forward to winning myself, so that goes for both of us. Ooh. I see, but Mitsuzuri, you can look forward to the future. Don't lose sight of the goal. There's more to our contest than being the first to finish. Who is this nigga? Damn! <laughs> you need to stop. Stop doing this. I'm so confused. I know. It's not a real victory unless it's a relationship that makes you green with envy. That's the biggest challenge for both of for us both, though. Doesn't matter how great of a guy he is if we can't bring ourselves to love him. Aiko Sai is heavy. From what I've heard, she's known to be a bit of a misandrist. I can't put too much stock in gossip though. That she made this bed at all. I can't put too much stock in gossip though. That she made this bed at all means less that she doesn't like, that she just doesn't like boys and more she hasn't found the right person. That aside. Wait, 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 wait. When did this become we? I'll have you know that I'm not an ice queen like you. I'd have no problem liking a boy. Yeah, I'm not buying it. Maybe you just haven't realized it, but I can't imagine you getting soft on a boy. You're always getting asked out and you've never once said yes. You'd think if that if you were actually interested, you'd at least date a few. I say your record speaks for itself. You don't care about boys. You have no imagination at all, do you? What if I already have feelings for someone? Wow, talk about tall tales. But sure, I can appreciate a good romance. Aiko's tone isn't mocking. She nods solemnly. Her sight tells me it would be nice if it were true. I don't believe myself. <laughs> I really can't hide anything from her. So can I. She's right. I know very well how cold I am. I'll concede that I'm a novice when it comes to romance. That you are. Two peas in a pod, right? Damn, it's already seven. We better cut the secret meeting short. Who knows when someone might walk in on us. Time to start acting like students. Oh, look at you. What a social blutterfly. Blutterfly? 
Oh, look at you. What a social butterfly. It was worth waking up early just to see it. Not as much as the great Ren Tosaka. I'm the David to your Goliath. Your ability to be a fake goody two shoes at school is practically an alternate personality. Ayako sniffs exaggeratedly. Stop talking. I emptied the rest of the teacup she poured me and brew a new pot. So, why not join a club? Don't feed me your usual bull about being unathletic. I still haven't forgotten how you beat me in every fitness test last year. You had me beat in lung capacity, though. And wait, fat bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gained three kilos. Kilograms. Those, those are the small ones, right? The kilograms are the small ones, right? Wait, that's nothing to celebrate, damn it! You tricked me! Aiko slaps the table. <laughs> Careful, you might spill the tea. Shouldn't the club captain be taking better care of the place? Shut up, nigga! I'm your rival first and club captain second some- Fuck. Shut up, nigga! I'm your rival first and club captain sex. Fuck! Shut up, nigga! I'm your rival first and club captain somewhere after that. If there's no one else around, you can bet I'm ready to take the fight to you. Put fist to jaw. Aiko side eyes me with a huff. She has a unique idea about beauty. A beautiful woman which m m Fuck. A beautiful woman- uh, Fuck. A beautiful woman must walk the martial path. She's always going on about that. Not surprising, she's well versed in most martial arts. Judo was the discipline she was least skilled at, so she joined the club and worked her way up to captain. She's probably one of the top three people in our school you'd least want to mess with. Should you really be saying you'd stop being a captain if none of your club members are around? Why not? I'm only captain for show. I could just have the more unruly members take care of my grunt work. Plus, there's better shooters than me anyway. I don't have any captain's honor to defend. That's so? I recall Miss Fujimura saying you were the best they had. Who is this? I can't do this shit. I can't do this shit no more. <laughs> Who the fuck is? Okay, I have a feeling that this is the actual person this time. Like this is Ayako. I have a feeling this is Ayako. Okay. Uh, coming from her, that's a bit of an ego boost. But still, she's only saying that because of the guy who left. You're right though, if Miss Fujimura thinks that much of me, I better act like a real captain. That's a spirit. Speak of the devil. Here come your clubmates now. Time for me to go, but make sure you do your part. Wait, you're not gonna watch a shoot? I wouldn't understand it even if I did. It's one thing to watch from afar, but the uninitiated shouldn't loiter in the dojo. This is I get up to leave, the first club members begin entering the archery range. Ooh, okay, where I left off in Fate Stay Night was her. I remember seeing her. That was it. I remember, I, 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 last, last, the way I, I remember I left off sometime and I saw her. But that's like, like, that's why I stopped watching. At least I think that's her. She looks about the same. I don't remember her being, a, I don't think she was a high schooler though. Good morning, Captain. Morning, Mato. Are you by yourself today? Yes, I'm sorry. I couldn't convince him to come. That's ah, fine. Even if he doesn't want to, there's no point forcing him. Aiko speaks to the first club member to arrive. I'll be going then. See you later, Mitsuzuri. Yeah, later, Tosaka. Have a good day, Tosaka. Thanks. Hang in there, Sakura. That is not her. Who the fuck? Stop doing that! Sakura. Oh, okay. I recognize that name. I recognize that name from Fate Zero and Stay Night. I recognize that name. 
I, I, I think I remember who that is. I leave the dojo behind so as not to get in the way. Yeah, Tosaka. Ohio. That's fucking Ryder. I, I know some of the characters. I, that's fucking Ryder, isn't it? Right? I, I don't know. I don't know who. I don't know who her master is, but I know that's Ryder. Why are you here? Morning, Tosaka. Funny running into you so early. Oh no, and here comes a person I least wanted to see. I recognize him from Fate Zero. He looked like that damn. Ah, I remember I didn't like that nigga though. I remember I didn't like his ass. Whatever though. I don't know who the hell this is. Good morning, Mado. You're here early. Of course I am. I'm the captain, so I need to set a good example for the first years. Shinji. Shinji. That's the main character, isn't it? Like that red-haired nigga? Shinji is the red-haired nigga, ain't it? Shinji Mato from Class 2C grins at me. He's the vice captain of the Kudo Club and darling of half the girls at school. It's mostly thanks to his looks, of course, but he's also admired for his good grades, social grace, being kind to girls, and being an overall heartthrob, or something like that. I really don't follow that kind of stuff. It's just what I hear my classmates say. I see. Hate to burst your bubble, but I'm pretty sure you're forgetting an important part of that, Mato. Try to remember next time. Huh? Uh, what's that? Vice. I don't care whether you're captain or vice captain, but if you make a point of leaving it out, people might think it bothers you. Vice captain. Oh, you're right. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks, Tosaka. Not sure I did anything you should thank me for, but hey, I'm not gonna stop you. What the fuck just happened? What was that? I'm so confused. With that, I turned to leave the range. Well, hang on. You're here to watch, aren't you? You're more than welcome to stay. Pass. I don't want to interrupt your practice. I don't mind at all. If anyone says otherwise, I'll kick them out. So why don't you stick around? I already said I don't want to intrude. Not as if I'm particularly interested in Kudo. I'm not really excited to watch a bunch of people I don't know shooting arrows. What's that, Tosaka? You don't care about Kudo? Mmm. I must just be confused after seeing you watch because after school so many times. Dang, checkmate. I don't know what he's playing at, but he seems to have seriously misunderstood things. So you knew, Mato. Yeah. Our eyes met often, you and I. I saw you watching me. <sighs> I wanted to call out to you, but you know how it is. I can't raise my voice on the range. This nigga romantic. Shinji starts closing in on me, looking pleased with himself. I see the triumphant glint in his eye competing with that affable smile. I had it wrong all- oh, damn it. I had it wrong all along. I thought you were watching a shoot, but you aren't interested. Why were you watching then, Tosaka? Why were you watching, Tosaka? Ah, now I see. It would sound like that, wouldn't it? Would you mind taking a step back, bitch nigga? I like my personal space. Who the fuck is this? <laughs> this is actually fucking insane. Uh, what was that, Tosaka? Wow, you're still not getting it. This isn't my usual style, but I guess it's what I'll take. Here, I'll make this real simple so even you can understand. I don't fuck with you, nigga. I am even less interested in you than I am in Kudo. I, don't, I ain't even know you was in the club. And I doubt I remember next time either. So scurry on somewhere, you riskless bastard. Nani? I must have touched a nerve because he tries to grab me roughly. Whoa, calm down. 
I twist out of its reach and turn to leave. Bye, Mato. Sometimes a little self-consciousness can do you good. Tosaka, you little bitch. Shinji sounds like he's about to say something, but he keeps his but he keeps his temper and doesn't chase after me. This guy is all style, no substance. If he had even a little backbone, the people around him wouldn't suffer nearly so much. I can take the rear entrance into the campus from the arch. This is not an this is not the school! I can't. Look, look, I can't do this shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't do this shit. This is insufferable. It's too fucking goofy. I can't take... It's the prologue. I want to finish the prologue. Look, I'm going to try and go a little longer. I'm going to try and go just a little bit longer, okay? I take the rear entrance into campus from the archery range. It's past seven now, but there still aren't any students in the hallways. What is that? What is that? That fucking demon! No, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Because at this point, I'm about to start seeing damn spoilers and shit. I'm not going to learn characters. No, I'm done. Back to title. What the hell is this? Back at the beginning, seriously? Hold on. If I hold on, if I join, if I re if I rejoin, will it fix? No, it doesn't. All right, look. That's the end of the episode. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, I read them all. Tap into the next one. I don't know what the fuck is going on with the game. It's funny as hell, but I I'm here for the story. All right, I've never I don't know the fate story. I'm here for the story, so I really don't want to continue this on with it so screwy and fucked up. So I'm gonna wait for them to fix this shit. And then, you know, episode two is going to be out. But peace out. I love y'all. Tap in, man.